Hello guys, today we are in the Lake Santrifon here in Switzerland and we are going to show one of our last videos about the FPGA training tutorial. The, today we are going to talk about FIFUS and uh, here I'm with my board and I hope that I found a tree or something that I can attach to it. And uh, as usual, we're going to the board, talk, talk a little bit on how the circuit works and uh, then we go to the, the, to the lab and see in the computer, in the screencast, how to create our circuit and how to simulate it. Okay? Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, see you guys soon. Five. Five will stand for first in, first out. When we use FIFOs, okay, FIFOs basically are used to communicate cross-domain circuits, okay, so if you have one circuit speaking at one clock one, and another circuit with another clock and you want to exchange information between them, you need a FIFO, uh, more specifically you want an asynchronous FIFO, okay, and the, uh, the other use of FIFOs is for circuit synchronization, which means you have uh, a circuit which is producing information, okay, and uh, another circuit that is consuming information and you want and you want somehow that the that both both circuits can synchronize and exchange information without losing data or some stuff like this okay so how the FIFO works imagine that you have a producer okay and you have a consumer here the producer push information to the FIFO okay imagine that you push for instance A B and C and then in another time the uh, we pop information from this five so uh, the last item sorry the first item that we push into the the five is a so this will be the first that is going to be pop out the second B the, the third C and that and there it goes so you push a then you push B then you push C and then you pop a B and C so the order is kept. The order that the information arrive to the FIFO is kept. This is the important point to remember. The FIFO has two states. The FIFO basically uh, gives to you the following information. If the FIFO is full or if the FIFO is empty. And basically those two signals you use to synchronize information. Okay? So back to the internals of the FIFO. So as I said, FIFO has the data in, write enable and the flag full. And as the output, the data out, read, enable, and empty. Okay? The, the heart of the FIFO is the dual port RAM. As you guys seen before, the dual port RAM is just a RAM block that has two ports. And it allows you to read and write information at the same tick of the clock. So this is really useful for our FIFO. Okay? The FIFO has internal write pointers and read pointers. This she, uh, with this she can manage in which position the new information is going to be stored and uh, she also has a circuit that detects the, the full or empty states okay so for instance uh, if the right pointer is increasing one two three four and there are five full limits eight when the right pointer reach eight the full flag will be asserted and uh, and also the read pointer when you pop information, it is going to decrease 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then the empty flag will be asserted. Okay, guys, now I'm going to change to the, to the screencast where I'm going to show how, the, how we can develop one file for using Verilog and how can we do the test bench. Okay, guys, hope you guys like it and uh, let's switch to the, to the real thing. Okay, guys, in this case, we're going to start a little bit by the end. Here I'm showing the test bench of a FIFO, okay? We are here resetting the FIFO to a known state. And after that, we're going to push some values. We're going to push the value 5, 6, 0, 6, 1, 2, 3, and 2, okay? So what we do, we rise the, the right enable signal, okay? And every uh, rising edge of the clock, we push those values inside our FIFO, okay? After these values are pushed, we, we deassert the write enable, we assert the read enable, and then we, we pop, we wait for, for 8 ticks of the clock, and in theory, if everything is working, we're going to have the same values there, that in the same order, okay? The, just one point to remember, after we push 8 elements, our FIFO full flag will be asserted, 
and after we pop eight elements, our FIFO empty will be asserted in the eighth element. Okay? So open our project in Vivado. Okay, let's take a look in the model part just to see what we have as input and output. Okay, I'm selecting this part. Uh, here is our read and write pointer. The, we are calling this function here actually this task. This task, by the way, is going to be called in the simulation time just to calculate the number of bits needed to, to store our read enable and write enable based on the parameter depth. So, uh, for instance, if you have a depth of 16, you need uh, 2, 4, 8, 4, by, 4, 4 bits. Okay, so he's going to calculate this uh, automatically for you. Now, here, this signal here, this variable is our internal array, is the one that is going to store the, the, the elements of our five, which has as parameter the depth, which is the size of the array, our flag empty and full. By the way, empty is when the, our internal FIFO counter is zero, and full is when our FIFO counter reaches the value of our depth, which in this case is eight by default. Here we handle our FIFO counters. So basically, if you read, we're going to decrement the FIFO counter. If you write, you're going to increment the FIFO counter. And if you read and write at the same time, we leave the FIFO counter as it is. Okay? Uh, as seen before, we use these FIFO counters to, to verify if our FIFO is full or empty. And scrolling down, we have our sequential always block that is going to handle the reading in our FIFO. So basically, if the FIFO is not empty and the read enable uh, input is high, we're going to read, we're going to put, put on FIFO out the, the element that is pointed out by read pointer in our memory. Okay? Uh, now is the part that we write on the FIFO. And I'm going to select uh, a nice feature. If you, if you put our code, your code between the synthesis translate off and synthesis translate on, it will be ignored by the synthesizer. So you can put, for instance, a display. This can be helpful in the test bench. Uh, well, now uh, we, we just handle how we increment and decrement our read and write pointer. So basically, if it's not full and write enable uh, is true, we increment write pointer. If it's not empty, and we want to read, we increment the read pointer, okay? And uh, we, we could put this uh, with inside the same always block, but choosing like this is better because we, it improves the readability of your code and uh, also is nice to debug, okay? Now I'm switching to the test bench, which is quite simple. Uh, we just follow the same recipe of all sequential circuits. In future videos, I'm going to show an easier way uh, keep watching that you guys are going to like. So now we instantiate, we reset our inputs to a known state, otherwise it will be uh, not defined the result on the test bench. And here what we test. We push uh, five values in the, in the FIFO and try, try to pop six times. So the last pop in theory should fail. Then we push more nine values, okay? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, until 14, okay? And then we pop 9 times, so everything should work as expected. So if you push 9 times, you can do a pop 9 times, but it, it has to come out in the same order that you will push it in, okay? Uh, then I just wait 2 ticks of the clock to start a new test. I push one item, and then I, tr uh, I use the fork and join to push and pop stuff at the same time. I, I'm going to do one, two, three, yes. I want to do like five push and pops at the same time. And the FIFO should handle this as well. One operation of the FIFO is that you push and pop values at the same tick of the clock. This should work. Uh, here, I'm just creating the functions punch, push and pop. Actually, not functions, tasks, but you can imagine as a function. And uh, this is just to help the readability of our test bench, okay? Now let's put to run the simulation and let's see the results. I'm now just open the, the waveform and I'm going to, to, to rescale the range. And 
I don't know if, if you can see. Okay, here you see that we are we have this display that is actually being called in our FIFO code. Okay, you see that the, we cannot pop the first time. We cannot pop because we push five times and we try to pop six times. So this should not work. And uh, well, in theory, I'm just opening now the zoom. The the FIFO is working as expected. Okay, if you want, you can put a, a virtual input output I/O to test it, the real thing inside your FPGA. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. It's nice. Our FIFO is working. Okay, I'm going to push this. Uh, I'm going to upload this code and put the link of this FIFO in our channel as well to to help you guys watch and uh, take a look on the code. This is quite nice. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, see you guys in the next video.